Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Everything OneNote. Today I'm going to go through five ways that you can give feedback to your students' work using Microsoft OneNote. All right, let's get straight into it. So the first one we talk about is using the draw tool or just simply creating text containers in and around the student work. So I'm gonna show you an example of um, where I've used my iPad to use the draw tool a little bit. Please don't judge. Um, I'm not very good at it and my handwriting's not great, but the great thing about the draw tool is it enables you to draw in and around and over the student's work without actually having any real impact on their work. So they can easily obviously, um, you know, delete ticks and things like that if they want to keep their worksheet nice and clean. But now it's you to go very quickly, go in and give some feedback on the students and how well they've done and things like that. So definitely make the use of the draw tool. And the other one is simply just using your text box or the text containers. So whether it's underneath to the side, wherever it is around the student's work, write in a few comments on how well they've done. And you might even, you can even set up some tables of things where you want the student to write and you can even set up a table on the next. A um, bit like using track changes in Word and things like that, being able to add some comments over to the right based on where their work is. Number two is inserting audio. Now, insert, inserting audio is a great feature in OneNote. It's very simple to use. Hitting that insert button, choosing your audio recording, and wherever you're clicked on the page, that's going to start a recording. So it's a very quick and efficient way to give feedback to the students as you can verbally say what you need to say a lot faster than you can type it or even draw it. So you can spend 10 to 20 seconds just saying, hey, Johnny, uh, make sure you fix up what you need to do in paragraph three, you haven't given an example, things like that. It's very quick and easy to do that for the students. So you can do, you know, multiple audios down your whole page based on how it is that the work student is work is set out for the student. Number three is using stickers or bitmojis. So I'll talk about bitmojis first. Um, you can see I've got a couple here on my page, one of myself and Richo. If you have created a Bitmoji, I guess that adds just that level of personalized feedback where you can actually put yourself in the page and whether it's, you know, giving them like Richo's one, nice work, A plus kind of feedback or there's a whole variation of Bitmoji. So you can generally always find something that's relevant to what you want to say or what you want to give back to the students. And the other one is using your stickers. So again, we're on the insert option and then if you hit stickers, that's gonna give you a whole range of options. Now, some of them are quite interesting, but the ones you're probably gonna go for are any of them that have the little pencil style next to it. So that's gonna enable you to actually edit that. So if you click on that, you can very much personalize your feedback by saying, well done, Troy, well done, Tim, whatever it is, and even add some more specific comments into that sticker. So definitely making use of the stickers is quite cool. So I'm gonna move myself around. Number four is using emojis. So you can see I've used emojis for my numbers here. I've got some below I'll talk about soon. And at the start of my page, now I've got a video on emojis and using emojis uh, and the benefits of using emojis. So if you want to know a bit more about it, you can check out that video on our Everything OneNote YouTube channel. But by putting the emoji at the start of the page, I generally go with like a tick and a warning sign that shows that the students have completed or not completed the work. And the best part about doing that is as you start ticking the students off for completing the work, when you're reviewing student work, it actually separates those pages as their name differently. So when you give 10 students a tick and you know leave the other 10 students with their exclamation mark, that's gonna sort them differently. So you've got two different pages now because they're named differently. And as you're reviewing that student work, that list, as you tick more and more students off that list, will get less and less. And then you can very quickly see who has or hasn't done or who you're still chasing up. Um, to who has another done their worksheet or the homework and that sort of stuff. So definitely make use of a bit mo uh, emojis where you can. And the last one is some kind of a checklist. Uh, and another example is medals or missions. Now, this is one, a feedback checklist. It's very specific to obviously your literacy and things like that. So I'm looking at, say the students are writing a paragraph. You can obviously get the students to do this first themselves or get the students to pair up and get a, and a partner to do all that sort of stuff to avoid some mistakes before it even gets to you. But if not, um, you know, just a simple to-do list. Have, have, you know, how is their punctuation, grammar, spelling, sentence flow? And then using your highlight tool to go over the student's work. So the whole point of all of these types of feedback is we want to put the responsibility back on the students to go back and actually edit or change or fix their work. We don't want to write it for them. So we're doing things that sort of give them clues and ideas and things to fix and change without actually doing it for them. And that's obviously saves us time as well. And the last one is medals and missions. Often with feedback, we're looking for things they've either haven't done 
or not done correctly, things like that. And you might just give a tick for things they've done well, but really put in an emphasis on saying something positive or something good about their student's work. So that's what the medals is, things you did well. And making a list of things like love your example, that creates a really compelling argument. That's some really positive feedback on something good they've done. And then rather than, I guess, a negative approach of, you know, what you've done wrong, things you can improve on and things you can get better at. So, for example, you need to link your argument back to the question, that sort of stuff. So really trying to balance out that positive stuff with things you can get better at um, in giving feedback to our students. So there are uh, five different ways of giving feedback to students using Microsoft OneNote. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video or took something out of it, hit the like button below. If you have any feedback, questions or suggestions for upcoming videos, we'd love to hear from you in the comment section. And make sure you subscribe for all of our latest ideas, tips and tricks on everything OneNote.